Hey, Jeff Kelderman here, Kelderman Manufacturing. Today we're gonna to go over how to set up a Kelderman corn reel. This reel happens to be on a Gleaner 2018 3312 Commander. So we're gonna go over how to mount the mounting brackets, where to set your two by fours, where to set the axles with the bearings, setting up your spokes, end spokes, and final uh, thing we'll go over is gonna be how to set up the drive. So first thing we're gonna do is go over the mounting brackets. 12 rows will have, and an eight row wide also, will have four mounting brackets. Now, if it's a four row, six row, or eight row, narrow, they're gonna have two mounting brackets. So, we're gonna go over the inside mounting brackets on the 12 row first. Most of the toolbars will go across the back on these corn heads are square. So, this is a little goofier looking, what I call it, uh, mounting bracket. So, this one clamps to the two. The key is, the same thing on all of them, you're gonna mount this mounting bracket over the center of this snout. So this is the first inside, first outside snout of your feeder house, okay? So majority of the brackets are gonna just slide on from the top. We have different videos on that, different pictures of what kind of mounting brackets you have. So once you get your brackets on the center on the 12 row, then we're gonna go over here and mount brackets on the outside. So what we're doing here is we're going first full snout. We're going to drop these from the top, make sure they're centered. The mounting brackets consist of two pieces. One's going to be the top piece that goes on top of the toolbar, and the second's going to be the chain hanger. Some of them where there is no extra structure down here to hook this chain to will be a one piece. Other corn heads that have additional structure going down the bottom where we can mount a corn, uh, the chain hanger to the corn head will have a separate piece. And again, those are in different instructions and videos. This particular unit has a one piece uh, uh, mount and chain hanger. So once you get your mount on there, if you need to mount another chain hanger that's a remote, we need to do that. Sometimes it'll be slanted, sometimes it'll be straight up and down, but that's, that can be seen in the other pictures and the other videos. So once we got our chain hangers and our mounts in place, next thing we're gonna do is mount the two by fours. So like I said earlier, four rows, six rows, an eight row narrow is gonna use two of them. The 12 rows are gonna use four of them. So what we do is we find our three quarter inch bolts here. We locate our two by four and we'll slide this in with this piece hanging down. This, the back of the two by four that has this dog leg in this five eighths plate welded to it has this bolt that goes through it. This five eighths bolt is how you will fine tune the adjustment later. And we'll discuss that in a little more detail at the end of the video. Each corn reel is going to come with one 2x4 that's got the loops. This is where you run your hydraulic hoses through that's going to run your motor. So you want to put this on the side of the combine that has your hydraulics. So once you get your 2x4s on there, we will do our final adjustment up and down after everything is assembled and we, we're running the spokes, making sure we have clearance between all the snouts. So as you can see on this, this 12 row, all the 2x4s, they're pretty, pretty darn close to being parallel to each other. So initial setup, you, you'll probably be a little bit higher than this and we'll end up bringing it down when it's all said and done. But so now the next thing you do is we're going to show how we hook up all the neutral axle bearings and get the axle installed. So every corn rail is going to come with one drive uh, sprocket. The sprocket is welded to a bearing. We, these do definitely need to be greased daily. Then the 12 rows are going to come with three of the neutral axle bearings. So if you have a four row, six row, eight row, it's only gonna come with one neutral axle bearing because you're only gonna have two two by fours. Whereas we have the additional two neutral axle bearings because we're running four two by fours on this 12 row. So once you've got your drive sprocket located and your neutral axle bearing, whether it's one for a eight row or smaller, or if it's three neutral axle bearings for an eight row wide or a 12 row narrow, you're gonna get your axle set up and you're gonna look for your coupler. So you can't see it here, but one of these axles has a stub shaft welded into the slides into the uh, other uh, axle. The reason we do that is it's easier to remove this unit when you can take it off like two six rows. So that's why we have a two piece axle on the longer uh, wheels. So now we've got our, our sprocket located and our neutral axle bearings. What we're going to do is we're gonna drop the, the drive sprocket down over the top of the two by four. When we do this though, we wanna locate our half by three and a half inch bolts that's what's gonna sandwich and hold this uh, assembly to the two by four. So we have our sprocket dropped on, our two by four 
with the, ho with the uh, hoops on it so we can run our hoses. So on this particular unit, we are starting clear out here on the edge. Um, the reason for that is, is right here in the center, we have the ear savers. So the ear savers cause us to have to run this uh, whole reel assembly closer to the end of the two by four. In your instructions, it probably says start about eight inches. So unless you got the ear savers in the middle, you will start farther back, closer to eight inches. So we got our drive sprocket dropped on our two by four that has the loops. Next step is we're gonna go to the next two by four over and we're gonna drop a neutral axle bearing as you see we've already got this greased and ready to go to the field. So we're gonna drop this on pretty close to the same amount back. So if you're gonna start, great place to start is just eight inches back. Uh, uh, unless you got the ear savers, then you're gonna have to come closer to the end. So we've got this dropped down. We've got our half by three and a half inch bolts and we've got it snugged down and we're ready to put our axle in. Okay, so since we're doing a 12 row narrow, we gotta go out to the outer two by four and drop our other two neutral axle bearings on. If we were just doing a four row, six row, or eight row narrow, we would, wouldn't have to do this step because we'd only have two two by fours. So what we want to do now is we got our, our neutral axle bearings located, we got our drive sprocket located, we got our axle located. So what works best, lay your axle out on the floor, kind of in front of the corn head, shove your neutral axle bearing in from the end, okay, just slide it right over. There's set screws on these, make sure they're backed out so that they're not real tight because they'll fit loose on that axle. So for like this 12 row, we would come in from the end, looks like we're coming about maybe three feet, okay? And then from the other end, where our coupler is, we're shoving this guy in just uh, around five feet. It doesn't have to be perfect for now. You just got to get the parts over the axle. Then you'll get on one end, get your buddy on the other end. We lift this up by the axle. We drop these on. Since we're doing a 12 row, we need to do the other end of the drive shaft. So make sure that the stub end is going to be, you know, connecting. We, we can't have the stub end on the other end. It won't, it'll, it'll wobble when it's going up and down. The stub end is inside the coupler. So what we do is we run around five feet from the end. We're gonna put, from the center, we're gonna put our other neutral axle bearing. And around three feet from the other end, we're gonna put the other new, neutral axle bearing. So just like you put the other side on, you'll get a buddy, put on, uh, slide it up, drop it on the top, and then you'll make sure you grab your coupler, shove that on there about halfway, and then you wanna have these bolts loose, okay? So this will, this will slide over that two by two axle, and then we'll slide the stub shaft into the other one, get them together. Then we wanna tighten this down. You can go ahead and tighten these down for now. That way your axle is one piece. Now that we've got our axle set through all of our neutral axle bearings and hanging on the two by four, what we wanna do is we wanna center this thing up because we're gonna start hanging the spokes on there and we don't have to loosen all these spokes. So just take a tape measure, measure it, go to the other end. Let's try to get this axle within an inch or so sticking out from each end of the two by four. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about spokes. So every row has a right hand and a left hand spoke. So if you got a six row, you got six rights and six lefts. We're doing 12 row here, so we've got 12 rights and 12 lefts. So what we're doing here is this particular spoke here is a right hand spoke. And the reason we call it, how you tell this is when you're setting in the cab, this spoke sets on the right side of the row. This spoke here sets in the left. So your row goes in between here. So what happened, how we designed this and why this thing works so good and, and works in standing corn is by being off to the side, then it comes and is bent in. So uh, each spoke goes on each side of the row, comes up, and then it's bent down, bent up, and that's what drags the corn in. So when we set these up, as you imagine, you want to hug this snout just a little bit. You know, we got uh, you know, an inch or two there. We just want it to be a little bit closer to this side of the snout on this side. We don't want to get this thing over too far on our right hand, because if you get the right hand too far, you're going to be knocking down your, down your standing corn. So the right side is going to hug the snout. If we would turn this down, we would find that this guy is going to be over here hugging this up. When you're putting your spokes on, you want to make sure you put them on in the right direction. So this, this curve goes forward, so that when you're driving, this is going in the same direction as your tire. This is going to drag the corn up into your gathering chains. 
you have them on backwards, it's just you're gonna throw the stuff straight up in the air and you're gonna have more of a problem than you had before you put the corn reel on. So you wanna make sure that all the spokes are set up so that when this thing turns, it's dragging your corn in. All right, so now we got our end spokes. End spokes are real simple. They just slide on the end. You just make sure that the, uh, the curvature is the same as your centers. And so now we've pretty much got the whole unit assembled. We need to set our final height up and down. So we're gonna to try to get this thing within an inch or two above the gathering chains. So that the, we just fine tune this two ways. One is you get your height pretty close with these linkages here. Now remember, we have two different chain hanger types. This guy is, is a one piece here that comes off the top mounting bracket. The other ones are, you know, are gonna be down here if you've got some type of cross member that your chain hanger is uh, attached to. So this will get you close we're gonna do our fine tuning with this three quarter inch bolt here. So when we tighten this, this is gonna raise it up. When we loosen it, it's gonna bring it down. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get our spokes to be within an inch or two of the top of the gathering chains. All right, so now pretty much the final setup is just gonna consist of, you're, you gotta get, your, gotta get your height. So your spokes are just a couple, you know, inch or two above your gathering chains. Turn this thing a few times, make sure nothing's hitting. You'll hear if it's hitting, if one of your spokes is, is hitting the side of the snout. If it is, just loosen it up. Um, your in and out's gonna be determined on, obviously, you know, older combines, you gotta watch out, you don't want spokes hitting the cab. You know, newer ear savers, you wanna make sure that, you know, you got your spokes clearing that ear saver. You don't want stuff to be hanging up. And your, your, your out, or your in links on the end, you just wanna make sure they're not gonna rub uh, on the outside of your combine. So once you've got this thing set up, it's as, as simple as getting your hydraulics hooked up. We find they work the best when you're running about 10% faster than the, the ground speed of your, of your tires. So um, these, these things work good. You know, my dad invented this thing in 1977. You know, 40 years later, we're, we're still building them and, and the key to design is the bent spokes. Uh, if a corn wheel doesn't have bent spokes, you run the risk of knocking the corn down. So uh, if you got any questions, you can check out our website, kelderman.com or you can give us a call at 641-673-0468.